Stephen, it's great to be chatting with you today. Now, you've come into this role as Chief Exec of the ABPI after a period being outside the pharma industry. So, what's brought you back in and what have you learned from being outside? fundamental drawback to a recognition that whenever you do, whatever you do in this job, whenever you start every day, you're doing something good. So it's about the discovery and development of medicines to address unmet medical need. And that gets quite personal when we talk about our relatives or our friends who are alive here today as a consequence of what this industry has done and discovered. In terms of learnings from outside the industry, I clearly worked in industries that have been um, confronting significant reputational issues having to reposition themselves and re-establish contract with society, if you like, to get the value flowing back into those industries and dealing with various stakeholders who have become disenchanted. And as we know, we're in a period of fairly significant change for pharma right now, as you often call it, a kind of perfect storm. But what role do you see for the ABPI in supporting the industry through that change? There's two elements of change that come to play in here, one of which is productivity of R&D and the second issue is the affordability of new medicines in the systems. And if we look at this specifically in the UK, we know the productivity issues coming through, but I still believe the industry is producing some great medicines. So you look in the past quarter, last quarter of last year, there were six or seven key medicines that came through, including new anticoagulants, including new cancer, hepatitis C, stream of new innovations. The issue we've got in the UK is twofold. Firstly, the UK is a low price market. And secondly, it's slow on uptake, so it's low and slow. What we have to do as an association is demonstrate the value of those medicines and also very specifically help the NHS understand that not adopting innovation is fatal to the survivability of the system itself. Do you see equivalent organisations to the ABPI operating in other countries? And in fact, do you see a role for the ABPI beyond the UK? We're a member of the IFPMA which, as you know, is the global pharmaceutical organisation, which looks particularly at people like the UN organisations, like WHO. Then we're also a very active member of FPIA, which is the European Association of Associations that are actually run by the companies themselves rather than the associations. The UK has always been seen as a thought leader, and we are determined to maintain that leadership. The UK is distinct from many European markets, not all but many, and our focus at the ABPI is fundamentally and solely on innovation. To be a member of the ABPI, you have to invest significantly in research and development. We cannot play the branded generics game or the generics game. It's all about research and development. As we've been saying, there's obviously a lot of challenges for pharma right now, but whenever I've heard you speak, you've always painted a very optimistic picture. So what future do you see for pharma? If you step back and just look at the situation, I think the future, the world, the future of the world without medicines would be a pretty depressing place. So we do need, and we will always need, medicines. So I think you should see this sector as dynamic and rapidly changing, rather than one that is going into a depression. And we all get a bit down about things now and again, but fundamentally, the human need is enormous. The need, there's still huge unmet medical needs, so including areas like the cancers, particularly some of the infectious diseases. Um, look at antibiotics, for example, would be a key point of unmet medical need at this moment in time. So the industry, I think, has an optimistic future. What it has to do, of course, is what it started to do, is to externalise a lot of its cost base, particularly on the discovery and development side, looking at appropriate partners to work with. The industry itself can always absorb the high cost risk of development, which is where the huge costs are involved in developing a new medicine, up to a billion pounds, so long as you get the commercial opportunity to reward the risk at the end. And the fundamental issue there, I think, is making sure the, the dynamics of our industry, which is a good industry, are understood by all our stakeholders. Communication is obviously key, and we know that Farm has had its fair share of PR challenges on that front. So how do you think the industry can better communicate what it does to patients and to healthcare providers? Communications, I think, has been one of the fundamental issues of this industry. So I think you address reputational issues by working with the stakeholders that have misunderstood us. We also address them through behavioural change. It's if we are being criticised for something, then why can't we change that behaviour? Because often we can. Not always, but often we can. So I do think fundamentally the, the reputational issue can be addressed. And also what we should be doing as an ABPI is being much more vocal about the value we bring. Because I hate the fact this industry is misunderstood. I hate the fact that we get attacked and criticised. But also, if you look at some of the data, our reputation is improving. We are held in reasonably high esteem by the public, interestingly. We're held in better esteem by the government. 
Where we have some issues is with the healthcare professionals, and we've sought to address that through establishing network groups with them and partnership groups with them, looking at the issues they have with us, be they on transparency of payments, on transparency of data, and looking at what we can do together with a statement of principles and cooperation to move forward. What would you say have been the critical game changers for pharma in the last few years, and how has that impacted on how the ABPI works with the industry? The fundamental game changer, I think, in the UK environment is the willingness of the NHS to work in collaboration and partnership with the industry. So you can take something like the QUIT programme, which looks at quality outcomes and performance and measures. Um, they've recognised that by using medicines effectively, they can save money elsewhere in the system. And QUIP actually is what you call a silo buster type of organisation, of which effective use of medicines is a part. Now we have to recognise in that deal, if you like, of effective use of medicines may save elsewhere, is we have to demonstrate that value, and we have to work in partnership with the NHS. So the old transactional relationship of buyer and seller has to go, because we have the technical knowledge, we have the scientific knowledge, and the system needs that to utilise the medicine effectively. And I think we've got to understand that we've got to work in partnership going forward. That's the game changer for the industry. Let's just talk about digital for a moment because there's a lot of discussion around what pharma can or can't do. Do you think the ABPI should be providing more guidance around the online space? And I think I look at this in various ways, one of which is what can the companies do themselves to give advice to healthcare professionals and also to patients um, and we need strong, firm guidance around that so people don't make mistakes within the regulatory context. But I think the second thing we need to do is look very aggressively and very clearly, recognising that patients get endless information out there about medicines. Endless nonsense is found online. In fact, people can buy medicines online, which is a huge risk in itself because the healthcare professional becomes disassociated with that process. One thing, one thing I am not for is direct-to-consumer promotion or direct-to-consumer advertising in any way in the UK environment because I simply think it's not appropriate within a socialised healthcare system. What I do think is appropriate is for information on products to be made available to patients online so we're seen as the authoritative source alongside the regulators, etc. Because it seems to me disempowering that we're not there from the patient perspective. But looking at this going forward, it would have to be done within a very tight, constrained and heavily regulated context. What do you think is key to the UK actually remaining a competitive environment on the global scene for the pharma industry then? The UK historically has always done very well, if you like, as an economy out of pharmaceuticals. We have global players based here. We have a lot of inward investment by the American companies, the Japanese companies and the European companies. And that has been based around a, a strong academic tradition, based around discovery in the UK. The UK is natural, British people are naturally very curious, but also generally when it comes to other types of industries, we're quite cautious, which means we're good at discovering things, but we're not very good at developing them. Now, farm has always been an exception to that, and I hope that exception continues. But for that to continue, there are two key issues to look at, one of which is, under, which is fundamental underpinning and support of R&D, making sure we do get the best graduates through, making sure that R&D is understood and enabled, that the issues on early development funding, particularly in biotech, of which we have some members, are addressed by government because there is a value of death funding between discovery and getting a development deal together. Um, and also recognising that there is an, the second part is fundamentally recognising we have to keep the UK at the lead of the pack in terms of commercial reward. The UK has to remain a, an, an important market globally for pharmaceuticals within the NHS, which is getting the medicines to the patients. And finally, where would you like the ABPI to be by the end of your tenure? How would you like to see it have changed? Well, it depends when the end of my tenure is, I guess, which may not necessarily always be in my control, but I'd like it to be, I would like the ABPI to be seen as the authoritative voice in the industry driving its reputation significantly forward, making sure that we are getting, as an industry, getting fair reward for the investments the industry makes in research and discovery and development, and also making sure that we've got rapid access and uptake of innovative new medicines in the system, in the UK, that help the patients. That's where I'd like us to be. Stephen Whitehead, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.